Well, we're standing in the Green Building Materials Laboratory, and my research interest is in developing new sustainable building materials, primarily from wood. And one of the areas that we've become interested in is producing modified wood for structural applications. One thing that's really intrigued us here in the state of Oregon is the hybrid poplar plantations that we see throughout the northern part of the state. Uh, this timber was planted about 20 to 25 years ago with the idea of using it for pulp and paper. But it's turned out that much of that production has moved overseas. And so we have quite large stands of hybrid poplar and it's currently being used for fairly low-valued applications. Unfortunately, it doesn't have the strength and stiffness for structural products, which typically have higher value here in, in the Pacific Northwest. So we've been developing some technology to increase the strength and stiffness of this hybrid poplar timber. Now, we use a process called viscoelastic thermal compression, or VTC for short. And basically all it is is increasing the density of this wood by means of heat, steam, and mechanical compression. To do the compression, uh, we need to have a, a sealed vessel. And so this device you see right here has a, a sealed chamber that's attached to a hydraulic press. And this allows us to uh, place the wood inside the chamber and close it up and then subject it to pressurized steam prior to applying a compression force to increase the density. And, and we literally crush the wood, but we crush it without causing fractures in the cell wall structure. And this retains the structural integrity of the wood itself. Uh, typically, we'll use conditions of about 170 degrees C and steam pressures of about 125 PSI. One of the wood species that we like to use is this hybrid poplar. And this is a piece of, of rotary peeled hybrid poplar. It's a, a bit more than one eighth of an inch thick. This material has a low density. It doesn't have very high strength or stiffness. It's not suitable for structural grades of laminated veneer lumber or for high strength plywood. So this material generally would go into our process with a high moisture content. It's not required that we do any drying in advance. That's one of the advantages of this process is that we use the water that's already present in the wood to help us with the steaming process. That avoids us from having to do a separate drying process to make the VTC wood and therefore reduces energy costs for making this product. Basically all we need to do is slide the raw veneer in between the press platens. Uh, the platens are located inside a sealed vessel. Uh, this is all preheated. We then close the vessel. The vessel has a seal on it and we have to apply the clamp so that we can retain the steam pressure inside and typically the steam pressure that we use is 125 pounds per square inch. At the end of the process the wood has been cooled down below 100 degrees C and the density has been increased. Typically the density increase will be about three to perhaps four times denser than the initial density of the wood when we put it in there. And that increase in density is proportional to the increase in the strength and stiffness. So that means that we can increase the strength and stiffness of not only the hybrid poplar, but any of the other wood species that we use, we can increase that strength and stiffness by a factor of three to four. I see there being many different types of applications, but perhaps the easiest way to introduce it initially would be in products uh, that typically use wood veneer already, because the the VTC wood that we end up with are going to be thin laminates, just like veneer. And so we feel that um, this type of, of process could be integrated pretty easily into laminated veneer lumber and plywood applications. It's a pretty low strength, low value wood, and the idea behind the VTC process is to create something that we can use as a structural component of, a, of a, maybe a wood composite. And so now what we'd like to do is continue that and see if we can put a more natural preservative system into that, into that hybrid poplar, which will be VTC pressed. I'm Adam Scales, and I'm a first year master student here at Oregon State University. And I work with Fred Kempke and Jeff Morrell on a couple projects. And one of them is right behind me here. 
What I've got for you is a steam distillation system. And what I'm hoping to do is extract some essential oils out of Western Juniper, which I've collected from Sisters, Oregon. It's collected last weekend and real simple, just went out there, lopped some branches off. And what I've done is with those branches, I've taken the foliage off and put it inside of this still. What I'll do is heat that still up, boil some water, and that water vapor will travel through the foliage. And with that heat, we'll extract some essential oils. It'll run through the top of the still, follow through a condenser, condense down, and what will come out is a, a oil water mix. And what I have then is something that I can remove the water from and have potentially a wood preservative. A wood preservatives would be something like if you're using an outdoor or an exterior grade lumber, so uh, you have to buy treated wood. And that treatment is your wood preservative. And so the idea of the wood preservative is to protect the wood from decay, mold, fungi, termites, and be able to be used in outdoor kind of exterior application. So here we are, we've got this piece, this is holding the water and the heating mantles are inside. What that's gonna do is bring the water up to temperature and bring it to a boil. And that water vapor is then gonna move up through this container. This container is what I put my Western Juniper foliage in. And what I've done is kind of smashed that Western Juniper foliage down in there, tried to put a lot of material in that steam will then rise through and go into what's called a condenser. A condenser here just flips over and it runs cold water through this system. And what that'll do is condense that steam vapor and turn it back into the liquid form. And here is where the water and oil system collects back in that, in that liquid form. The water will go right back through and go back into the system there, but the oil usually separates and will just collect within this section of the chamber. And from there, I can just siphon off by twisting this knob, I can siphon off that water and oil. So what I've got with me right now is the resulting oil from the steam distillation. And this is some oil that I've collected from a heartwood sample of Western Juniper. So it's gonna be a little bit different in color from this foliage but I wanted to show it to you because it contains a bit of water inside of it. So that's, it's gonna be a mixture of water and oil, much like your, your salad dressing, right? Your oil and vinaigrette separates. So I'll let that sit and kind of separate into the two different oil water systems there. And then I can siphon that water off and you'll get a, essentially a pure form of the oil there. I'm gonna be using this oil to test and I'm gonna apply the oil to the VTC treated wood. Once I determine how well it works, um, I'm hoping to combine it with cinnamon oil, which also has shown, there's been some tests and studies done that show it's got um, a certain amount of uh, wood protection. And so the idea behind it is to mix the two ingredients and kind of create a synergistic effect for wood preservatives. Um, sometimes essential oils might be good for protecting against only fungi. Maybe another oil would be good at protecting only against termites. And so the idea is, can we cre you know, make a list of what we want to protect against, combine those ingredients, and have a wood preservative that um, is a little safer to use.